Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tim's Vinyl Confessions. I'm Tim Durling, and Jeff Witcher is once again uh, guesting on this one with me from Jeff Witcher's Vinyl Destination. This is part two of our Yes CD collection. We did part one last week. We went from the debut in 1969 all the way up to uh, very best or highlights, the very best of Yes in 93. And now we're going to pick it up from here. Now, Jeff, this is the second half. And um, would you say it's a little top heavy with uh, live albums and compilations? Yeah, most definitely. And just even keeping up with the lineup changes at this point, there's so many greatest hits compilations and live compilations. And then there were some studio albums kind of sprinkled in there, but most definitely the live comp the live compilations and the greatest hits or hits packages outweigh the studio albums by far from this point forward. And I tried to get as many of these as I could, but there's some that I just simply didn't want to spend the money on because they're just too expensive. Like this, uh, a live CD of songs for, there was one that, that and I can't remember which one because a lot of them have similar titles, but there's one where it was actually cheaper to get the vinyl than it was to get the CD and, um, and the vinyl wasn't cheap. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I decided there was one final one I really wanted to get I got it. So that's why I said, you know, I think, I think we're ready to do the second part. So we'll get started uh, with part two of our Yes CDs. Uh, first, we're going to talk about is 1994. This is Talk. And uh, very, very strange looking cover art. This is actually done by a guy named Peter Max, which is a name that if you're, a, you know, into artists, you may not recognize that name. Uh, what I've got here, this is an, a U.S. Uh, version. We may have the same version here. Yeah, um, I suspect we do. Yeah, it's on Victory Records, which was a label that um, was started by Phil Carson, who originally signed these guys to Atlantic in the late 60s. Uh, he started Victory Records, which didn't last very long. It was distributed by Polygram. Yeah, my CD looks the same as yours. I, yeah. And uh, the, only other, the only other thing I have on Victory Records is the Triumph album, Edge of Excess. Um, it, wasn't, it was a short-lived label. Very colorful uh, Colorful inside here and this kind of blobby, I don't know how else to describe, blobby logo, kind of a mess, really. Um, now, this isn't a bad album. This this was a return to the 90125 Big Generator lineup, so it's still got Trevor Rabin. It's very commercial. I remember hearing The Calling on the radio a fair bit in 94. Great tune. Um, I'm Waiting's a good ballad. Uh, um Walls is sort of a mid-tempo ballad. Now, what's interesting about that song, that reminded me, because there's a co-write on here, um, this is another one of those till, I think, the, the 11th hour. They didn't know if John Anderson was going to come and do this. So they were considering uh, hiring Roger Hodgden from Supertramp, which, I mean, he certainly got the voice for it, but it, it would sound like, it would it would be like super yes. It, he's so distinctive. I, I couldn't, I don't think it would have worked. It's, it's almost like you're better off going with a complete unknown than going with a known quantity like that. That very rarely works, especially at this, this late in the game, 94. It wasn't really the best time for a commercial rock of any kind. And that's definitely what they were going for here. Um, it's, a, it's a different album. And, and I heard, it's one of those, these ones that I've heard, I play it and I don't mind it, but I have a hard time remembering the songs on here. I don't know if you find that or not, but I've heard Yeah, no, it. it's, it's pretty forgettable. I like the first couple songs. I like the calling, I am waiting, yeah. and then you start getting into state of play and walls, and then I, I couldn't even hum the tune of the last yeah. couple tracks, honestly, and it is forgettable. I think the artwork, like you say, you know, you've got such a classic, iconic artist like Roger Dean, and you've got such a great logo like Yes had, why from time to time they just abandoned that and decided to come up, especially this is definitely the worst logo of any that yes, at least to my taste anyway, that yes have used on an album. It's bland, it's a white cover, it's really, you know, gets lost. Well, you almost can't even tell what it says. So, no, yeah, and I, 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 the Y looks like it's supposed to be a bird and you know, maybe the, the E is like a clamshell. I don't know what they were going for, but um, uh, it's probably John Anderson and, and Peter Max got talking. Ooh, 
<laughs> but but yeah. the cool thing about it is the next thing we're going to talk about, they remedy this in a big way. So the next thing I've got came out in 1996, uh, and this is called Keys to Ascension. Um, this is a combination of a live album and some new studio tracks. And, and I can see that we've got maybe different versions. I just happened to find this used not too long after I first got into the band. So this came in a slipcase or yeah, slipcase like this. This is on um, CMC International Records, which is a label that was out in the 90s that signed a lot of veteran bands from the 70s and 80s that were getting dropped from the major labels. It was distributed by BMG. As a matter of fact, uh, the version I have here is a BMG music service version. So okay. it came in this box. It came with this huge poster, which is kind of interesting. Um, and as you know, you may have been able to ascertain the Roger Dean artwork is back. You know, this looks like yes. And Another thing, not only does it look like yes, it's pretty much the quintessential yes line of reunited once more. So it's John Anderson, Steve Howe, Chris Squire, Alan White, and Rick Wakeman. So, uh, and maybe now, now the version I've got here, this might be just the same as yours. Yeah, I suspect it probably is. Yeah, this is also a DMG version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it's got the, the CDs themselves. Yeah, it had the CDs themselves have, uh, you know, the Roger Dean artwork continued. And um, this uh, was recorded, I think, sometime in 95. And there's a write-up about it. Um, and the band sounds really, really good on here. Like, they really, really sound good on here. They, they, um, and it's a good track listing. I mean, they do Siberian Katru, kind of a gutsy move. They do the Revealing Science of God from... From Tales, Tales from Top of Graphic Ocean, they do America, Onward, uh, Awaken, and then Roundabout and Starship Trooper. So a good set list. And I'm sure that wasn't the whole set, but that's what they recorded here. And there are two new tracks on here, Be the One and a strange title, That, comma, That Is. Both good songs. And um, immediately, I think, except for, like you said, the singles from Talk, better than anything on the Talk album. Um, and this is yes being yes. Right. Well, and that that is, I think, has got to be the longest track yes had recorded since probably Close Tales to the Edge. Yeah. 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 yeah somewhere. It's 19 minutes and 14 seconds long. So it's probably in the top. If we discount Tales from Topographic Oceans altogether, which I think we should, because it's really kind of on its own planet, literally. It's probably in the top five of single yes songs that aren't medleys or anything that the, the longest um, length. Now, mm -hmm. the next one I've got is, um, of course, this line, it very quickly falls apart. But the next one I've got is Keys to Ascension 2. This is hard to find. Uh, this version I have is from Japan. Um, and this, I paid a little bit more for this one. This is more of the same, it's the same format, um, live tracks and actually, five new studio tracks relatively shorter relatively the version i've got here is on victor which is a well-known uh, japanese label still again with the uh, roger dean artwork although the cd itself looks a little bit more like the first one for some continuation here and it's actually got so it's got the classic like bubbly yes logo but it's also got this new one that they started using in the 90s too they were kind of combining them same lineup and on this one they do have seen all good people going for the one which sounds amazing time and a word close to the edge and turn of the century some long tracks on this one and again some really good new studio tracks uh and it comes in this flip case here uh let's see kind of a thick booklet the booklet's got uh pictures of the band um and again the band sounds really good on here like this sort of lineup and and, and i don't want to put the the band still sounds really good on here they sound really vital the, the tempos aren't way slowed down yet. So, you know, it's worth checking out. But this album was very swiftly announced to be released as another version of Yes was working on an album. And so uh, there's two things to talk about here from 97. And I think you might have it. So it's open your eyes. Um, yep. This version I have is it was on Beyond Records, which, which had a few uh, had a few bigger bands. The Motley Crue's reissues were on Beyond. I know that. 
Okay. This is actually a Canadian Columbia House version. And this lineup is now um, Rick Wakeman's gone again. And they bring in Billy Sherwood. Billy Sherwood has been like, you know, on the, you know, the, the batter's bench in Yes for quite a long time. And uh, eventually found his, you know, found his place in the band with, I think, with this album for the first time. But he's been like an engineer and things like that. I'll ask you your opinion first, Jeff. What do you think of this album? I'm not a fan, honestly. And I know a lot of Yes fans rank this near the bottom of Yes's uh, studio discography. Uh, I think it sounds very rushed. There's not really much memorable about it. Like you say about Talk, I like Talk a lot better than I like this album. I can tell you oh, that yeah. because yeah. this is just... I don't know. I, can, I can't remember any of the songs on here except for the song Open Your Eyes, and I don't like it. I just, no. it's too poppy. It was too much of an attempt to, to have a radio single, and it did have a minor blip on the mainstream rock chart, but who cares? I mean, it just, it's not that good. And, and you read about the making of this album. Like, I've got, um, like, Martin Popoff's Yes book, Time and a Word, really good book. Um, Steve Howe has little or nothing to do with the writing on this. It, it, it almost started off life as a Billy Sherwood, Chris Squire side project. And then it, it got shoehorned into a Yes album, which, you know, that's happened a few times. And this has got the lyrics in it. And, and I, I, honestly, I cannot think of how any of these songs go besides the title song. I just, it, it's completely forgettable. And I, and I wish that I could say more about the new Yes music coming out on the second half of their career positive. The only thing I will say is that I'm, I'm really surprised that they didn't do something to play on the, the title, because if you cover up the first e and i's it becomes yes so i'm surprised they didn't incorporate the logo into it there's nothing wrong with this cover i mean mm -hmm. this is simple like talk is but it's the right logo it's a black cover and i think it's more distinct so yeah that's all i gotta say about that one yeah well it was a huge disappointment just because after the keys to ascension you had the classic lineup back they sounded like the yes of old the artwork looked like the yes of old and then you see this CD and think, oh, great. You've got the artwork, the classic Roger Dean artwork still, and it looks like yes. And then you realize Rick Wakeman's not on it, which the story goes, Rick Wakeman left the band for uh, fourth, fifth time. I for, I'm losing track now because Rick yeah. Wakeman has come and gone more times than I can even remember but he was unhappy with the keys to ascension project that they just didn't make a studio album that they blended live tracks with studio tracks he just wanted to make a straight studio album with the classic yes lineup not put any live stuff on there and so apparently he jumped ship after this but yeah this album i usually you don't get an album this bad from a band this good unless they're like fulfilling a contractual obligation, like it's the last album they owe their record company. And so their heart is just not in it. But this album is just so uninspired. It's so, it sounds like a parody of Yes, almost. It's unmemorable. And I really, I, I think it's kind of garbage. I don't care for yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's my least favorite, but it's down there. I mean, it's definitely the most forgettable. So the next thing I have has a copyright date on the version I have from 1998, but it's been put out several times. And this is called um, Beyond and Before. And this is um, a two disc set of BBC recordings made in 1969 and 1970. This particular version I have is on a company called Purple Pyramid Records. And um, like the first Keys to Ascension, this one comes with a big poster, which is kind of cool. And, and like that's the original yes lineup and it's funny because they have you know it's like a speech balloon come next to john anderson as if he's saying yes reminds me of the front cover to the best of kansas uh yeah. so i like it for that and, and it's very psychedelic looking but that's the time period it's 1969 1970 and um now uh you know i don't mind the first two yes albums I, I, as far as bands that started in the late 60s and and there's not a lot that i have in my collection like there's deep purple and there's uh now, Led Zeppelin's kind of, you know, its own example, but Deep Purple and Alice Cooper kind of both started. And I really don't like, I don't really like the first two Alice Cooper albums at all. And I'm not a big fan of the first three Deep Purple, like the psychedelic period. I like Hush and I like Kentucky Woman, but that's, you know, there's not much more. I actually really think that the first two Yes albums are quite good. Um, they're not exactly prog, but they're getting there. And it sounds like Yes. So that's the period that this is drawing from. Now, 
it says that disc one and disc two have like completely different songs on them from different sessions. But the version I have has the exact same tracks on both CDs. It's got disc one, whatever's on disc one is also on disc two. And I don't know if anybody out there has this same uh, phenomenon or not. The only other thing I'll say about this is that the liner notes um, were written by the late Peter Banks, who was the first guitarist in Yes. And I, I won't, I mean, I won't speak ill of him, but at least at the time he wrote these liner notes, a very, very bitter man, very bitter about not only the bandmates he had in Yes, but also of his predecessor, Steve Howe. Like just nothing like, and to me, it, it dilutes the intended effect. This is supposed to be a snapshot of abandoned time. And, you know, it could have been a little less, like, like I said, it's very bitter. Uh, good performances. Also, it's cool they do Something's Coming on here, which is not any of their albums, and that's been featured on several compilations. Dear Father was a B-side. That's on here. And other than that, it's got, you know, uh, Looking Around, Sweet Dreams, Then. I really like Then. Then is like kind of a pointer to the, the prog direction. And even the Richie Havens cover, No Opportunity Necessary, No Experience Required. I like that one, too. And it's a good thing because it's on here twice. Are the versions on there longer than the studio versions or are they pretty faithful to what's on um, They're pretty faithful. It's not exactly like like live. It's like, you know, um, most, especially most British bands, inevitably, if you made BBC recordings, they're going to come out Led Zeppelin and Queen and Deep Purple and stuff. Uh, next thing I have is from, it, it's got a copyright date on of 99 and I don't know why I got this, but it's just a best to the very best of yes, 1970 to 1987. It's kind of a dumb cover, but it's got like a, like a sky, like a cloud view. And if you can see that it's got like various album covers from, from time and a word going up to big generator. And there's 10 tracks on here and it's just got the albums on here that are featured. Um, it's an interesting ex um, compilation. It's got, so it's got no opportunity necessary America, heart of the sunrise and you and I Siberian Katru. Uh, Sound Chaser, On the Silent Wings of Freedom, Into the Lands, Owner of a Lonely Heart, Love Will Find a Way. This is a German CD on Elektra. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a good compilation if you just want a short, not box set. Uh, and to me, it's, you know, it's a good companion to Classic Yes, because it's got some of the newer stuff on it, and it's got some deeper tracks like Sound Chaser and you know, anytime drama is featured, I'm happy with that. So now the next thing we have is the next Yes studio album from 1999. And I'm happy to say this is, in my opinion, quite an improvement. Mm -hmm. So it's the latter. Yeah. So and this is using that new Yes logo, which I don't mind. It's still got the Roger Dean artwork. It's unmistakable. Um, yeah, I, I really uh, I don't mind this album. Um, this is a U.S. version. Again, it's on Beyond, distributed by BMG, and I imagine our copies are, are quite similar. Um, this album, does your CD have the graphics on it? This, um, yeah, yeah. And this one is, um, it says it's an enhanced compact disc. I've got the hype sticker still on this jewel case, and it says enhanced compact disc containing demo of Homeworld PC game, screensaver, and yes, interview. Okay. I've never checked out any of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because you're right. The, the quote unquote title song, Homeworld, the latter, was actually, there's a video game called Homeworld. Um, and this album is significant for a few reasons. It's the only time that they worked with Bruce Fairburn, one of my favorite producers. He's produced a lot of great like, albums in my collection. And I'm, it was very sad because this is the last album that he worked on. And he died during the making of it. And it was John Anderson and Bruce's secretary that discovered him. I can't remember what it was. I don't, I don't know if it was a heart attack or an aneurysm or something like that, but he was only 49. And uh, this is, and the funny thing was, this is the very next thing that, that, that Bruce worked on after Psycho Circus by Kiss. <laughs> uh, nothing at all the same. Six piece uh -huh. lineup on this one, uh, this time around. So it's John Anderson, Steve Howe, Chris Squire, Ellen White. Billy Sherwood is there on backup guitars. Um, I don't think Steve Howe likes having another working with another guitarist um, and a guy named Igor Koroshev on keyboards. Now he was in the band for a couple of years and got uh, get kicked out of the band after some allegations. Um, and uh, so this was produced in Vancouver, you know, as most Bruce Fairburn productions are. And I think this has a lot of really strong songs on it. And, and they have said that Bruce Fairburn cracked the whip 
and made them work hard, which that's a trademark of the bands he's worked with. It's the, it's the reason that uh, Aerosmith had such a big comeback. It's the reason Bon Jovi sold so well. He wasn't settling for anything less. Whatever band he was working with, was like, you know, whoever you are, you make the best album that you can make, uh, like the best Yes album you can make. There's kind of a cool collage um, of all the song titles, and there's some various, um, if you start looking in here, there's various uh, icons from earlier in Yes's career. I'm just seeing, like, right there, there's a, a Tormato. Oh, yeah. There's, there's Relayer. Like, if you the Fragile, I see on here. And actually, that's one of, I'm pretty sure that's one of John Anderson's solo albums. I'm not sure. It's just got his face on it. But um, yeah, I think this has some really good songs on it. It, it. It's it's just funny. Like, you know, it's only been two years since Open Your Eyes, but that album was rushed and it sounds like it. And they just didn't spend any time on the songs, it, it, I don't think. But this has a lot of great songs on it. Lightning Strikes is good, Face to Face. Uh, Home World is good. Uh, there's a, there's a fun song on here, like a reggae song called The Messenger. It was written about Bob Marley. Uh, Nine Voices is the closing track. It surfaces many years later. Yeah, not uh, not a bad album. No, yeah. Not at all. Yeah, it was a nice and, return to form. And I think they needed that a producer like Bruce Fairburn to kind of give them a kick in the pants and say, look, you guys are better than this. You know, I know you can do better. You guys are yeah. legends and let's act like it let's make an album like it and i think they rose to the occasion for sure i mean billy sherwood as a producer might have sonically you know what they need but he's not going to have the, the force of will to really crack the whip and say come on guys you, you get somebody that's got a track record behind them now as we're going to find out that doesn't always work but mm -hmm. so it wasn't very very long before the next yes album came out um 2001 i actually think this album if it didn't come out on September 11th, it was like the 10th. It was right around 9-11. Uh, and it's called Magnification. And this album is unique because it's the first time that Yes did an album without a keyboard player. They had no keyboard player at this point. So it was just a four-piece uh, lineup. And they did an album with an orchestra, which um, I don't mind the idea. But a little bit like talk in that I like the title song, Magnification. I kind of like Don't Go. And I have a hard time remembering anything else on this. Um, yeah, my version's on Beyond Records again. They seem to be sticking with that label, although I got this just a few years ago. It's a reissue. And um, I don't think this is Roger Dean artwork. It's not particularly great. It's not particularly bad. It just kind of is. It's kind of a cool design on the disc itself. Yeah. I do remember seeing this album in the delete bins. Um, before I got into the band, but I do, I do remember that they obviously thought this was going to sell more than it did. There's some, uh, some old, like sort of old looking diagrams in here. I don't know if it's like ancient maps or, or uh, ancient, ancient math, but um, I don't know. What do you think of this album? You know, I wish I could put mine back in the delete bin, honestly, because <laughs> I don't understand the purpose of this. Like, I don't know, like I get it, bands were wanting to record with orchestras and it was almost sort of like the unplugged phase that everybody went through. Everybody had to do an unplugged album. Now it feels like everybody's got to do an album with an orchestra. Yeah. And Yes is already so sonically complex when they play together as an ensemble. It just feels like the orchestra is getting in the way, you know, like I wish I could hear them play a lot better if we didn't have the orchestra on it. And to me, on some of it, it sounds silly. The songs, like you say, are forgettable. I, I I never listened to this album. It's on my shelf, but really it collects dust because, you know, I kept it around for this episode, honestly, but I, I'm not a fan of this. I feel like they try to, you know, do their best impression of themselves on this album, but the orchestra's in the way. I, I might like it better if it didn't sound so cluttered with that orchestra in there and the strings i feel like they you know if you want to do that use a mellotron maybe or, or something yeah. but i yeah. or how about this get a keyboard player mm -hmm. you know if rick wakeman won't do it see if tony k will do it you know like right. there's, there's you've got options mm -hmm. and now like it, so you know if somebody didn't know anything about this album or any orchestral album you said okay and right around within the same two-year period you said okay metallica did an album 
with a symphony orchestra. Well, they've actually since done two. And Yes did an album with a symphony orchestra. Which album do you think is going to sound better? I think most people would think, well, Yes, but it's not. And mm -hmm. maybe it was, maybe it's the way it was mixed. Maybe they should have had it mixed so that the orchestra was farther in the back and let the, the, the guitar and the bass and the vocals speak. Also, they just needed better songs. Speaking of better songs, the next thing I have is, again, a pointless thing to have because I've already got it, but it's got a copyright date on it of 2002. This is called Key Studio, which is an odd name unless you know the story. And all this is, uh, it's all of the studio tracks that were on the Two Keys to Ascension albums. This is the album that Rick Wakeman wanted to put out. Now, I understand from a record company point of view why they did it the way they did it, because they certainly weren't the first band to do that. They wanted people to look at it and go, oh, this has Roundabout on it. This has Andrew and I. I'm going to get this instead of a bunch of song titles that aren't familiar to them. I understand that. This is from, this is a BMG Direct album. And it was put up by Castle or Sanctuary, which are British labels. Um, not much to say about it, and there's not much in it, other than it's good material and Usually I find by the time you get all the way through those keys to Ascension, the live parts, it's like, okay, I want to switch to something else now. Um, so yeah, this is a good way to get all those studio songs in one place. Well, and I wonder uh, if they thought the juxtaposition of the live, classic live material alongside the newer studio material might give more, you know, credence or, you know, it, it might make the new Yes material sound more like the old yes you know and well yeah that and that and they're not giving you a bunch of new songs to listen to all at once mm -hmm. but um you know maybe if they put the new studio tracks first and then followed it up with the live i don't know the next yeah. thing i've got is a live album i think a pretty good live album that was recorded on the latter tour now it's got a copyright date on of 2004 it was actually done in 2000 but this is uh house of yes live from the house of blues and we both have this so you've got your hype sticker on it the version yeah. I have is on Eagle Records, and uh, this is the same lineup that recorded the Ladder album. And I actually got this before I got the Ladder. Uh, so this has, uh, now I will say this, this may be the last time that Yes put out a new album and actually did a lot of it in concert. Because there's, uh, so they do Homeworld, they do Lightning Strikes, The Messenger, It'll be a good day, face to face. Um, so they do five songs. So that's and and they're well paced within in in between. Like yours is no disgrace, perpetual change, um, ritual, and you and I awaken. Um, they what I what I this is a period that I like because I don't know how they did it. They convinced Steve Howe. They did uh, cinema going into owner of a lonely heart, which only makes sense because. The average person that, that might go see these guys in concert at this point, they don't know who was in the band at one, at one time. They don't care. They know one Yes song, probably, and it's Owner of a Lonely Heart. You go to see the band, they don't do that song. So, right. yeah. So for a period, anyway, they were doing it. Uh, so this is still Billy Sherwood and this Igor Koreshev on here. And um, I think that, uh, yeah, I think the band still sounds really good on here. And it's got the... Um, yeah, it's actually got the tour dates listed on here. I've never seen Yes in, in concert myself. Have you? Have you seen them in concert before? No, I, I never have. They haven't come around that often, you know, since the early 90s. And I've, I've not had the opportunity to see them. Um, but I, was this the last live album, new live album with John Anderson on it? No, I, it's not. It's, it isn't. And, and I forgot to mention this, too. You reminded me, sadly, even though it's 20 years old now, Magnification is the last studio album with John Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, the next thing I have came out in 2004. The Ultimate Yes, uh, 35th Anniversary Collection. This is on Rhino. And uh, this is a the version I have has three discs. And this is a pretty good, uh, you know, run through there their catalog there's some acoustic songs on the third disc i think the third disc might not have been available on all the versions the discs look kind of cool themselves you know the classic uh logo and artwork and um typical like for rhino rhino issues tend to be pretty good um with some of the album covers listed and again this folds out into a poster they they must have known that this this band was from like the poster generation but this is really cool would like to see this on vinyl actually 
you know, classic Roger Dean artwork there. Oh, okay. You fold it up. It's got all of the albums. And what's cool about this one too is that it, it, even though it was released by uh, a, ver a division of Warner, it's um, it has uh, "Lift Me Up." It has "The Calling." It has "Open Your Eyes." It has "Home World," and it has "Magnification" on it. Those. So it's it's up. It's as up to date as a compilation could be. It doesn't just stop at Big Generator like like a lot of their compilations did. It's funny, you were talking about reissued live albums. That's exactly what I've got next. Um, with a, it's, got a, it's got a copyright date of 2007 on it. This is, yes, live at Montreux 2003. And at this point, Rick Wakeman came back yet again. So it is the classic, uh, yes, lineup. And it's not a bad live album. I love the fact that um, they do Don't Kill the Whale, because I love Tormato. They do To Be Over. Uh, now, some fans may disagree with this, but when they go into the whole Rick Wakeman, like Catherine the Great segments, and he's just doodling around, I'd skip that. I, that does nothing for me. Um, it's got a long version of Awaken on here. That sounds pretty good. Not really Roger Dean artwork, but it is his logo. So at least it looks like a Yes album. And this is on, uh, again, Eagle Records, which, you know, is, is the few of these are going to be on. There's a write up here from Dave Ling from Classic Rock Magazine, which is a magazine that I really uh, enjoyed over the years. Picture of the band, John Anderson playing that funny looking, I don't even know what it is, like a, it's like a long ukulele or something. Uh, let's see, and the next thing is the one that I was looking for, looking for, looking for, and finally located a version of it from uh, Germany. It's copyright date on of 2009. This is called Symphonic Live. And uh, this is, there's a two disc version. I'm settling for the one disc version. So this has, um, Close to the Edge, Long Distance Runaround, Don't Go, which is one of the songs of magnification I do like. Starship Trooper, And You and I, I've Seen All Good People, Owner of Lonely Heart, and Roundabout. And um, that's the disc itself. I feel like Starship Trooper appears on every single Yes live album. It's one of those songs that they seem to do every single concert. That's a diagram that appears inside the magnification album. I'm not sure why. Uh, what's interesting about this one is that the keyboard player on this is a this has got a symphony on it, but it's also got a keyboard player. The keyboard player is Tom Brislin, who's now a member of Kansas. And uh, so he's all over that new album, The Absence of Presence, and even sings a song on it. And it's really, really good. So there's a connection there because of this. Next thing I have is there's a 10 year break between studio albums. The next studio album to come out was in 2011. And it is Fly From Here. I can tell already we got different versions. Yours looks like it's not even opened. <laughs> well, I, you know, when I got, when I have digipacks, what I do is I, I buy these like protective sleeves for them just so they don't get all dinged uh -oh. up. In the corners. It's not a bad, I, it's not a bad idea because that's, I don't like digipacks for that very reason. I also don't like them because if the, if the spindles break, there's nothing you could do. Now, right. I will go on record as saying, I love this album. I really like this album. Um, you know, it's, it's the one Yes album of latter day that I can honestly say without, you know, just fan service saying, I really enjoy this album from start to finish. I'm not sure why. It might be because the material, a lot of the material on here has a vintage going back to 1980 because We Can Fly From Here, which is part of this, this the opening We Can Fly suite, they actually did on the drama tour. And to bring it back into that, Trevor Horn produced this album. Another reason why it's good, it's got an actual producer on it. Trevor Horn, of course, not only a producer, but he was the singer for Yes during the drama period. And then he went on to produce, become a huge pop producer, and he produced 90125 and part of Big Generator. Um, this is the one album, the studio album, that has Benoit David on it, who's actually a Canadian singer. Sounds a lot like John Anderson. He was a member of a, a Yes uh, cover band from Montreal called Close to the Edge. Little side note, linked to another band that I really like. The bass player for that band was named Richard Lantier. He's now the bass player in April Wine. So, okay, yeah. But uh, so, yeah, I, I actually, I think Benoit was a better replacement singer than, anyway, uh, mm -hmm. I, I think it sounds so much like John Anderson. Apparently he wasn't that good live. I don't know. But uh, yeah, this is a really, really good album. Now, the funny thing, it's kind of like you mentioned, uh, I think it was the latter, your version was an enhanced uh, version. This is a version on Frontiers Records. It's got a bonus DVD with the making of. 
DVD will not play for me for some reason. I think we have the same version. Yeah. Of course, classic, lush Roger Dean artwork. And um, yeah, I just think this album, this, it's, it was successful for them as far as putting out a good album. It was actually a little bit of buzz around and um, this album would resurface in a little bit. Yeah, very yeah, happy. Benoit, Benoit David, you could have fooled me. It's not John Anderson. It's sort of like fake butter, you know. Oh, I didn't realize it wasn't John Anderson. Well, I didn't read the credits. Yeah, especially if you're to hear some of the live clips. Um, as a matter of fact, I have, let me see now. Make sure I've got the right one here. Yeah, okay. Um, one of the harder ones for me to pick up was this. This is called, in. this is when their album titles start getting confusing. They start to look the same and title the same. In the present, live from Lyon or Lyon in uh, France. This came out uh, in 2011. So it came out the same year as Fly From Here. There's no Fly From Here material on here, although they did it in concert. On this, this is when they started taking a couple of their albums and doing them in their entirety. No, I'm wrong. They haven't done that yet. This is a good song line. It's got Siberian character of Seen All Good People, Tempest Fugit. Always bonus to go onward. Astral Traveler. Astral Traveler, they go all the way back to either the first or second album. I get the songs and they're mixed up. I mean, what is Astral Traveler, if not another way of saying Starship Trooper? Mm -hmm. uh, Yours, Notes, Grace, and you and I. There's a, there's a Steve Howe solo called Corkscrew, just an acoustic guitar solo. Owner of a Lonely Heart, South Side of the Sky, which is cool. Machine Messiah, which is really cool. And then Heart of the Sunrise, Roundabout, and you guessed it, Starship Trooper. Uh, there's also a live, there's a DVD of this concert on here. And this is the, um, I wanted to get this one because I wanted to get a document of this band live. So there's the two CDs and the DVD. I guess it was, I guess Benoit David developed like a bronchial infection and had a hard time breathing. And so they didn't wait for him. And on this one, they've actually they don't have Rick Wakeman, but they've got his son, Oliver Wakeman, who plays pretty much, he, he can play like his father. He can play like Tony Kay. Um, and uh, yeah, a good, a good collection. I wish they had recorded some of the fly, the fly from here stuff on here, but um, it's a good solid um, live release, which is yeah, good because like the there's a lot of them. I like the fact South Side of the Sky is on there because to my knowledge, it's not on any other yeah. live album. And I, that's one that's, of my favorite tracks yeah. off Fragile. Um, yeah, I really, I like when, I like when they rock a little bit and that's, that's a rocker of a song. Um, yeah, it is one of the deep, there's no real deep tracks on Fragile because it's one of their best known albums, but it's one of the deeper ones. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, so far, the last Yes studio album, uh, it's been seven years now, 2014, Heaven and Earth. And by now, um, Benoit David was replaced by John Davison, which, you know, he has such a similar name to John Anderson. And he does sound like him and he's a perfectly good singer. Okay, I just don't think he sounds as much like John Anderson as Benoit did. But uh, this is uh, the, the next studio album to come out, 2014 on Frontiers Records. This time, obviously you've got Roger Dean artwork again. They've got Roy Thomas Baker, uh, producing who Roy Thomas Baker was originally slated to produce the album that would have come after Tormato, but of course Wakeman and Anderson left and then Trevor Horn came in as producer and as singer. And so uh, I wanted to like this album. I really wanted to like this album. The album won't let me. It's another one that's you would think with a with a talented lineup. Uh, of Roy Thomas Baker, you would think that there would be so, okay, so at this point also, uh, Jeff Downs is back on keyboards. So it's the, um, except for the singer, it's the drama lineup uh, reunited again. Uh, it's another one. I can't remember the songs after I play it. I find it's very weak sounding. There's no real rock on here. It's very boring. And you expect more from such a capable band, especially where their last album was so good. I don't know why this was such a disappointment. I, I just don't know why it just isn't that good. Yeah, well, the dichotomy of it all is that that is probably one of the most expensive Yes Studio albums to get on CD yeah. because it faded from, you know... Yeah, it was I, never reissued. Copies. Yeah, yeah, and so now, I mean, it's not unusual to see it retailing for $50 or on eBay for 
you know, more than that even. And it's not a very good album. That's one of the reasons I don't have it. I'm not paying, you know, $50 for an album that, you know, I'm only buying because of the Roger Dean cover art. The rest of it, I I don't care for. It's just boring. It's terrible. It's just boring. I don't, now that of all of the, I'd like to have Fly From Here on vinyl because I like the artwork and I like the album. I like Heaven and Earth on vinyl because I like the artwork. It's very cool, but it has nothing to do with the merits of the material on it. So so moving on, uh, 2014 also brought another two CD DVD set uh, like it is at the Bristol Hippodrome. And this is when they were starting to do the complete albums and concerts. So CD one is um, all of Going for the One. And this is with the current lineup and Going for the One is one of my favorites. So. That, it's cool to hear like parallels and uh, the title song. You know, I just really, really like that album. CD2 is the Yes album, which is another one of my favorites. Every song on that is just fantastic. And it's good to hear a venture done because of the six songs on the Yes album, five of them are usually in the concert at one time or another. I don't think they ever did a venture live. It's a, and it's a short little song. They could throw it in easily. And then the DVD is just the, the two of them in, in, in concert. Again, like the last one, they also did material from Heaven and Earth. None of it's on here, uh, even though it's on the same label on Frontier. So the same lineup. By now, I'm going to say it, by now they're starting to slow down. They're literally starting to slow down the tempos. And you can really hear where Alan White is just not, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, um leaving out fills and speeding up and slowing down. I mean, I don't know. For It's funny because for a band with exacting high standards, it doesn't sound like it always. I'm not saying it's unlistenable. It's just, if you listen to that and then you listen to the actual studio albums, you're like, yeah, there's parts missing. Um, well, it's, like another- asking Pete, it's like asking Pete Rose to go out today and, oh, you know, why don't you hit a few line drive singles? Uh, you know, why don't you uh, hit a home run into the left seat? Ble- it's like, it's not going to happen. He's, you know, at a certain point, you know, I'm, you're glad to have him, I guess, even out on stage doing what he can. But, you know, I think they were right. Eventually over time, they brought in a supplemental drummer because, yeah. You know, Alan White has been around since the late 60s, and he's such a great drummer. Uh, yeah. But after a while, I mean, you can't keep up that pace. You don't have the dexterity. You don't have the ability to uh, play like he uh, plays on well, the many Jess records. It's funny because, I mean, that's, you know, for all the people that were sad when Rush stopped touring, that's exactly what Neil Peart, he did not want to do that. He never wanted to be less than great on stage. Now, in, in a complete contrast, so there's, okay, there's another double live album called Like It Is with another live at the something or whatever. That's the one that's ridiculously expensive and I'm not bothering with it because it's actually, it was actually cheaper to get the vinyl version than it is to get the CD version and the vinyl version is not cheap. So um, I, hopefully I, I stumble upon it somewhere. Speaking of stumbling upon things, last summer, uh, Matt, Matt Phillips, who's been on both of our shows now, um, found this for me and I didn't even, I knew about it, but I'd forgotten about it. This is called uh, Progeny Highlights from 72. This is a 2015 release and by now, of course, 2015 is sadly when we lost Chris Squire, really the owner of the S name and the only guy who'd been on every single album and every single incarnation of the band. This is classic guest material recorded in concert, various venues in North Carolina, Toronto, Greensboro, Knoxville, Uniondale, Durham. Um, and it's all stuff from the, the, the Yes album, Fragile and Close to the Edge. And it's from these concerts that the Yes Songs live album came. These are alternate versions of them. And Rhino put this out in 2014. So um, obviously, I mean, this is the classic lineup at their finest with it, where, where if anything, the songs are a little faster than the recorded versions and a little more nimble. Um, mm-hmm. There's the discs themselves. Great artwork, of course. Roger Dean artwork. Um, and there's a the booklet with this. This is worth seeking out if you're a really, really big fan of that material because that's, you know, that's what you're getting here. This is prime. Like, this is 
exactly what it sounds like. Progeny highlights from 72 that I couldn't have titled it better. Now we're on to more, more double live albums. Uh, this one is actually one that I really like. Um, well, half of it anyway. This is Topographic Drama, Live Across America. Yeah, we both have this one. Uh, and uh, this came out again on Rhino. Rhino seemed to be the company putting these out now, which is good because it means they have better distribution and they're also easier to go back and get. And uh, this is actually, um, I got it in Canada, but it's a U.S. version. And by now they've got Jay Shellen on drums supplementing. Uh, Billy Sherwood has taken over on bass from Chris Squire. And so this is again, continuing the two albums theme. They've got, oh yeah, that's another thing. That live album that I can't get a cheap copy of. I'm pretty sure that one they do fragile and close to the edge. Okay. So that's yeah. Great so, combo. Yeah. Uh, so this one, they do drama, which is probably my favorite. Yes. Album. And then they do topographic oceans. Very brave of them. Uh, and they I'm also they do, don't do the whole album. No, it's a, uh, it's, um, it's an edited version of it. And really, it's more like if they'd done that album as a single, what it would have and should have sounded like. And then they fall. They, so they also do Heart of the Sunrise and You and I, Roundabout and Starship Trooper. <laughs> I never yep. thought about that before, but it's true. Uh, there's yeah. the two themselves. This one did not. This copy I have is not with a DVD. And this is where it's like, I don't have any of these recent albums by Yes on vinyl. The last Yes vinyl I have right now is Big Generator. Because so many of them are expensive, really expensive, especially when you've got two CD sets. That means they're four LP sets. It means they're almost a hundred dollars. It's just not, just not worth it. So you know, let's get the pictures of the band here. Um, I just always glad when when drama gets some some notice because I really enjoy that album. That's just one of my favorites. Always one of my favorites. Now, again, the next thing I have is just. The story of Yes gets very confusing because at this period in time, there were two versions of Yes out on the road. And uh, so I picked this one up. 50th anniversary, Yes, featuring John Anderson, Trevor Raven, and Rick Wakeman, um, live at the Apollo. This is a two-disc set that's on Eagle Records. And um, not to sound catty or anything, but if I'd had my choice of which version to Yes to go see, I'd have gone to see this version um, because there's a, there's a lot of reasons for that. Musically, it's tighter. Uh, John Anderson, like John Anderson was born 44. So at this point, he would have been 74. Sounds great. He sounds fantastic. Like he can still sing really, really well. He's obviously taking care of himself. So obviously you don't have the Roger Dean artwork on here um, and you don't have the classic S logo. But that's not that's kind of cool, that, that logo that they used. Um, also, so obviously there's other, uh, there's other, uh, players on here. So on bass guitar, a guy I'd never heard of named Lee Pomeroy, really good. And a guy on drums named Lou Molina, who I had heard of, uh, he used to play with Kim Mitchell and this is going way, way, way back into the eighties. If anybody remembers a band called, they had a funny name, they were called Cock Robin and, uh, they were sort of a pop, popish band. They had a minor hit with a song called When Your Heart Is Weak. He was a drummer for that band. And somehow he's made his way up. I almost think he's with King Crimson now, but I could be wrong because King Crimson's had 200 members at least and counting. Um, so this is a really musically together lineup. But the other reason I really, really like this one and why I would like to see this band is because I'm a kid of the 80s and they do changes. They do hold on. Of course, they do owner of a lonely heart. Um, they do Rhythm of Love. They even do Lift Me Up, which is one of the few good songs from Union. It was the biggest song from it. And they do, you know, um, Awaken. Uh, they do Seen All Good People, Heart of the Sunrise. It's really, really good. There's a DVD version of this too. Now, one criticism that has been leveled at that, this release, is that the audience has turned up ridiculously loud. Like, they'll cheer for the smallest of things. So, but whatever. This is a good sounding album and i'm glad i was able to add this to my collection that's that's the lineup i would have liked to have seen yeah um, no, that looks like a fun one yeah um, nothing against steve howe but trevor rape is an amazing guitar player he's a good singer um he that's probably my era of the band that's definitely the era i was first aware of so now the next thing i have is a 
something that some bands do sometimes and I don't always go for it. This is called Fly From Here Return Trip. And this came out in 2018. It's not on any label. They put it out themselves. And this is where Trevor Horn actually went back and redid the vocals, re replaced Benoit David's vocals. To be quite honest, you can hardly tell. And that just shows you how good a fit Benoit David was for this band. Um, there are some, a few added musical parts and there are a couple of uh, songs that were, there's actually three songs that weren't on the original. Um, song called Life on a Film Set. I don't think that was on the first one. Um, song called Solitaire. And then I don't know who told Steve how to sing, sing lead, but he does a song called Don't Take No for an Answer. It's okay. It's a little bit like when Bruce Kulick sang one song on Kiss's Carnival of Souls. It's very low. It's, it's, it's just whatever. Let him sing a song, I guess. If um, there was ever a title that sounded less like yes, it would be Don't Take No for an Answer. Yeah, it's a strange, it's, it's like, it's, first of all, it's like too long a title, but anyway, I like this album anyway. This is, this is like a book and it's got a lot, it's got a, so with Trevor Horn singing, and it's it's Chris Squire's bass part still on it, um, this is the drama lineup, you know, and it's a fine album, you know, um, and there's a write-up in here uh, from Trevor, not only about, uh, about Chris Squire, and I'm pretty sure that um, I want to be, I want to make sure I like this, or I want to make sure I'm right about this, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time they asked him to do this, his, his wife had been in an accident and was, and, um, was in a coma. I'm going to guess she didn't recover. So he basically thanked the guys for, you know, giving him something to do, uh, whatever. So, but yeah, it's, it's, this is a good album, no matter how you get it. I usually listen to the original version because the new songs aren't, you're not missing much. They're okay, but it's a good album, however you can get it. Yeah, that one's easier to find. The original Fly From yeah. Here is a little more challenging to, to pick. Yeah. But I've never known a band to do that before, where you've recorded an album, and then you go back a couple of years later, and you re-record it with a different singer. Um, I don't know that that's ever happened. Um, I mean, what, what comes to mind and is the like the first couple of Ozzy Osbourne albums where they replaced the bass and drums on them, and, and that was... I don't think anybody was too impressed with that move. And no. I, I, I don't think those versions were on the, on the shelf long. And then Rush, of course, they remixed Vapor Trails, but that's, it's, there's no different personnel on it. Nothing was re-recorded. So yeah, it's kind of unique. It's unique in my music collection anyway. Yeah, that it's almost like if, they had, if they'd asked Sammy Hagar to go re-record the vocals for Van Halen 3 or something, I, you know. <laughs> oh, you know what? I might be up for that. I like Gary Sharon. I like Extreme. That was not a good mix, I don't, in my opinion. I, I, I might. There's some songs on there that sound like they were written for Sammy, like Fire in the Hole, but we're getting off the track here. Uh, next thing I have came out 2019. This is called Yes, 50 Live, celebrating their 50th anniversary. Yeah, you've got this one. Um, this is the same lineup as before, although it's kind of cool. There are some guest stars on here. They have... Uh, Tony K guest on keyboards on some tracks and even Patrick Moraz, which is kind of surprising. And I like the fact that the, there's some songs on here that you wouldn't expect. Uh, they do nine voices from uh, the ladder, which is the only newer stuff that they, you know, at this point, there's no, no nothing, 90125 big generator or like that. They do parallels, which is cool. They do soon. Um, they do, we can fly from here. They do madrigal from um, Tormato. And they do Starship Trooper. <laughs> and, of course uh, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's very cool artwork. I like how the, the logo is almost like, looks like it's gold. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And um, there are reminiscences here. It's interesting because the, the one I showed you with John Anderson and Trevor Raven was also the 50th anniversary celebration. But I guess, I guess the Steve Howe version is, you know, the actual version, the, the version that doesn't have to call themselves yes featuring steve how this is this is a cool uh picture here so you know it all sounds really good but it's it's just there's something about the sound that's just not as dense as is the the stuff that came before it um okay so the next thing 
This is not an official version. I saw it on Amazon. I thought it wasn't very expensive, so I picked it up. Uh, it's got a copyright date on 2019, but this is live at Glastonbury Festival 2003. And this has the classic lineup on it. Um, there's some bonus tracks on here. And this is a lot like, this must have been what they were doing in 2003, like because I've got the other, um, the mantra one, because they do Don't Kill the Whale on here, and We Have Heaven. And, but um, I will say this, the best thing I can say about this, Jeff, is that this is a live album, Warps and All. Mm -hmm. And the best example I can think of is the beginning of South Side of the Sky, where Alan White completely flubs up the intro to the song. Now, that sounds like a complaint, it actually isn't. It's real. These guys are real. They make mistakes. And that's a tricky, you know, that's a tricky part. And besides, we all know Bill Bruford did it in the first place. And, you know, but uh, so this, this is, uh, there's not much in here. Like, and all the, the credits are behind uh, the CDs. So, yeah, it's, I uh, appreciate, I appreciate the fact that they, somebody released this, but I hate the artwork on here. It looks like stock footage. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, it's really cheesy. It's something, I mean, they, they got the classic Yes logo and they just pasted it over, you know, the most generic concert photo of, I mean, I... I it doesn't look like a Yes audience, does it? When you look no, at it. No, and it almost looks, it's funny because whoever they're clapping for, it almost looks like Thin Lizzy, um, you know, on stage instead of uh, whoever. I can't even make out. Oh, okay. Well, it's kind audience. of like... It's kind of like um, Rainbow, Long Live Rock and Roll. When they've mm -hmm. got that big banner that says Long Live Rock and Roll, then the liner notes, that's from a Rush concert. They airbrushed <laughs> up the star band and like, it, it's, it's funny. Yeah. And uh, the last thing is uh, something that you and I did an episode on. The, the, so far, the newest release, from, yes, the only thing that's come out in 2020, uh, the Royal Affair Tour, live in Las Vegas. We went, we talked about this at length. Um, you know, I'm going to say it again. Uh, with the, they didn't need to put Imagine on here. I understand why they did it, but they sh I wish they'd have just done another Yes song. Um, but I like the fact they did Tempest Fugit, Going for the One, and uh, I also like the fact that it was just a single live album. didn't uh, didn't cost all that much. And you know, I I'd be perfectly happy if they put out a new studio album. At least give us a chance to listen to it. Yeah, make up for Heaven and Earth, which you know I feel like they needed to do a new decent studio album with john davison rather than have that be his only legacy you know uh starship yeah Trooper, you forgot to mention uh also <laughs> yes yeah, last song. and it's funny i never noticed that word, but you're right it's on every single one of their live albums it's a good thing it's a good song um you know it would be cool if they did an album where they had as many as want to participate and just like just the ultra yes lineup have john anderson do a track with them have trevor horn on there tony k bill bruford Patrick Moraz, like have these these guys like even just contribute a little bit. And I think I mean, here's the thing. They're capable of doing a good album. I mean, you know, like um, my favorite album from last year was Kansas. So it's not like these old guys can't write good songs anymore. Sometimes they need a little inflection of new blood. And I, I hate to say it, but it, it would almost be good if they would just have Jay Shell and do the drumming, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, and and but I mean, if you had Trevor Raven and Steve Howe, I don't I don't want it to be like a debacle like Union was, but I mean, like just different tracks, not trying to shoehorn everybody onto the same track and have it sound like a yes album. Don't have it sound like this mishmash that, that Union was. But um, yeah, you could call it reunion or something. I don't know. But oh, they could they, there's all sorts of horrible puns they could do with it. Sure. Why not? Why not? At least give us something to debate. But, yeah. So so there you go. That was a lengthy as we knew it would be. Look through uh, part two of our uh, yes, collections. Jeff, thanks once again for uh, tuning in for this one. Uh, I know it was a marathon one and uh, looking forward to doing some more of these. So thanks yeah, everybody for watching. Good. Yep, thanks. Thanks everybody for watching Tim's Final Confessions and we'll see you later.